Ensuring your filaments dry is a massive part of achieving reliable and high quality prints. And because of this, we've covered lots of dryer options on the channel. While many will get the job done, the size of the spool being used, max temp needed, quantity it can hold, and overall effectiveness means it's not a one shoe fits all. Last year we looked at the Sunlu Filla Dryer S4, a large form factor option capable of drying four 1kg spools at once. A few months ago Sunlu reached out letting me know they were releasing a new dryer capable of drying 3kg spools and reaching 110 celsius wanting to send a unit over for testing. I almost did a double take when I read this because up until now 70 celsius has been the cap for any of the dryers I've used. In almost every dryer video I've done I at least get a few comments saying that the dryers just don't go quite hot enough so I was really excited about this one and agreed to take a look. Over the past couple of weeks I've been poking around at the Sunlu Filla Dryer E2 to see what it's capable of and I've got some thoughts. In today's video we'll be diving into the E2. We'll go over its specs, what it offers, and I'll give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in, let's go over the specs of the E2. From the outside, the E2 looks an awful lot like the S4. They're the same height, use the same feet, and as far as I can tell, use identical screens. The E2, however, is a little bit skinnier and has an overall footprint of 400 by 220 by 307 millimeters. It uses a hinged lid with four strong magnets to secure the lid in place when shut. There's eight ports with a rubber-like gasket that can be used to feed filament directly from the dryer to the printer. Two on each side of the lid and two on either side of the machine. Similar to before, they can be sealed with an attached plug or left open to allow for additional venting. Other than that, there's not a whole lot going on on the outside. There's a power input and rocker switch on the back and the name E2 with 110C in big letters on its side. Opening the lid and taking a look on the inside is where things really start to differ. Shortly after I received this dryer, I was informed that it was a nearly final unit, and that they were still optimizing the mold, which meant that the lid could deform when drying at higher temps. A week later, I was told that there was a software issue with the annealing mode, where when the annealing mode countdown timer hit zero, it wasn't auto shutting off the machine, and in addition, that some of the wheels may potentially be loose or even fall off, which is another thing that they've been working on correcting with an updated mold. At this point, I asked if it wouldn't be better for me to wait for the finalized version of this dryer. I almost always decline reviews when there are still changes that are happening with the exception of things like minor firmware tweaks. I was told that they would prefer me to test and make a video on this machine and that they would send me the final version when it was available, which I thought was a strange decision. Since I'd already agreed to take a look at this dryer, I proceeded, but I strongly encourage everyone to check for other reviews to make sure that these issues have been addressed. When the new unit comes in, I'll pin a comment confirming the changes that I see. Jumping inside the machine, the first difference I noticed was with the wheels. While the S4 had metal bearings and a grippy rod for the filament to sit on, the E2 just had a metal rod with a bearing on either side. I'm assuming this is due to that grippy material not being compatible with the higher temperatures that the E2 can reach. As they'd warned, I found the wheels to be looser than I would have liked, and a few didn't sit in the mold as firmly as they should have. I was able to mess with them a bit and get them seated, but it's something that needs to be corrected. Having them shift around or even pop out would be incredibly frustrating for anyone trying to print directly from the unit. For filament compatibility, the E2 can hold a spool up to 250 millimeters in diameter by 153 millimeters wide. Sunlu states this is equivalent to one three kilogram spool two two kilogram spools or two one kilogram spools. I don't have many large spools, but I do have a few two and a half kilogram rolls of IC3D filament that I've been wanting to dry out and print with for some time. So I was really looking forward to using them. Unfortunately, when I placed the spool into the dryer, it was clearly too tall for the unit. I measured it having a diameter of 295 millimeters. 
Since I don't have many large spools, I can't really compare it against any others, but I would imagine with these larger spools, there's probably even less of a standard than what we have with the one kilogram rolls. Because of this, if you're planning on getting this unit specifically to dry out larger spools you commonly use, I strongly recommend that you measure your rolls beforehand to ensure that they are actually compatible with this unit. On the left side of the filament cavity is a removable compartment that can be used to store desiccant. Other than that, there's a large vent on the right side where the PTC heater is housed and another vent on the left side used to cycle air around the chamber. There's a sensor in the center of the left vent, which I'm guessing is where they're monitoring relative humidity and the current temperature. I was a little curious about what exactly was going on inside, so I removed all of the base screws and pulled the bottom cover off. While a fair bit of it was still covered, I did get to see what looks like the SSR controlling the PTC heater. There's also a fan above it, and based on how it's positioned, I believe it's used to help cycle the return air from the left vents inside of the machine. On the right side where the PTC heater is, there looks to be a motor sticking out, which seems to be the main source for moving air. Once plugged in and the switch is flipped on, tapping the little power icon on the screen kicks the dryer to life. The interface on the screen is almost identical to the one on the S4. Using the set and arrow buttons on the bottom, you can adjust the temperature of any filament profile, change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, turn the green light on or off, jump between the six filament profiles, adjust time, and switch between the drying and annealing mode. For anyone curious about noise, I measured the dryer at 56 decibels with the lid closed at approximately one foot away, and 61 decibels at that same distance with the lid open. Since I feel like this unit is really geared toward those printing with higher temp materials, I set the E2 to its max temp of 110 Celsius and ran a few tests. The first was just how long it would take to reach temp. For this, I took my thermocouple thermometer I've used in the past and attached one inside at top center, bottom center, left center, and right center approximately an inch off the wall. Within 15 minutes, it had heated up to around 65 Celsius, and at 30 minutes, it reached 110. Thermistor 1 was at the very top, and 2 right above the heater, which is why they displayed a higher temperature than the left and bottom of the unit. I checked it a few times after, and it seemed to settle at around 120 on the low end, and 140-ish halfway above the heat source, so a fair bit hotter than 110. While heating it up to 110, I was able to witness the warping lid that I was warned about. This mostly returned to flat when cooled, but there's still at least a slight warp. The next day, I heated the E2 up to 110 again, and then grabbed my thermal camera. I started by checking the warped corners, and could clearly see that heat was leaving through these openings. Then when I checked inside, I found that where the PTC heater was, the temperature read up to 170 Celsius. While the thermal camera doesn't show me the air temperature, and I imagine directly on the PTC heater is going to be the warmest spot, the PTC heater is set right up against a metal grill. This is concerning to me because at that higher or those higher temperatures, you could burn yourself pretty badly if you touch that metal grill. This is something that you'll need to be very aware of if you're using this dryer to print at those higher temperatures. In previous dryer videos, I've taken a sponge, weighed it, then dampened it and checked on it at set intervals until it returned to its initial weight. So I decided to do the same with the E2. For some reason, I had the scale set to ounces, probably from mailing, instead of grams, but I performed the tests the same way. Completely dry, the sponge was 0.18 to 0.19 ounces, or approximately 5.25 grams. I then dampened it and weighed it at 0.66 ounces, or 18.7 grams. I set the E2 to 50 Celsius, which is its default PLA temp, and checked on it every 15 minutes. I went with the 50 Celsius temperature because I was more interested in seeing the E2's effectiveness more so than just hitting it with high temp brute force. At two and a half hours, the sponge was back down to its starting weight. Checking my past video on the S4, the sponge I tested was 20 grams and took two hours at 70 Celsius, and referencing my video on the S2 and Ease Dry at 50 Celsius, two and a half hours is fairly impressive considering the larger volume of air the E2 needed to move. For anyone wondering why I use a sponge instead of, say, filament, it's because it's much easier to measure and show. 
I did take some wet TPU and PETG, then print out a retraction test along with a Kali Dragon. For both of these, but especially the PETG, you could hear popping and even see steam coming from the nozzle. But when I printed with them, the PETG parts turned out great. The TPU had stringing, so when I dried the spools overnight, I hoped I would see a difference. But other than maybe a hair less stringing on the Cali Dragon, I really couldn't see much difference. Neither of the filaments popped or had any steam after they were dried, but it can be really tricky to show the difference, so the sponge test is at least a nice reference. So what are my thoughts on the E2 based on my time with it so far? Well, I really wish they had waited and sent me the final version. The warping lid at higher temperatures and the sketchy wheels definitely didn't leave a real positive impact on me. I know they said it would be corrected, but this is the unit I have, so it's all I can go based on. I'm also really bummed that my large spool didn't fit in the dryer. Really, the biggest advantage this dryer has is for someone who uses lots of large spools that they verify fit, or someone that's printing with really high temp materials looking for a drying solution. Given that this heater is priced at over double the cost of the S4, you really have to need at least one of those two things for it to make sense. For most, if you're printing with standard filaments in 1kg spool sizes, the S4 is a much better option. It really feels more geared to someone in an industrial environment or an engineering lab, but at that point I would question whether an industrial dryer and dedicated oven for annealing wouldn't make more sense. While I'm a big fan of options and think a higher temp dryer around this price point is needed, and appreciate Sunlu trying to push the bar, the E2 seems more rushed than I would have liked, and the exposed metal grill makes me concerned for home users. If the warping lid and wheels are corrected, it's a step in the right direction, but with the high temp that this thing can reach, it makes me wonder long term how the housing itself is going to hold up. I'm sure this dryer will check the box for certain users, but it feels like that may be a fairly niche audience. And that has been it, the Sunlu Filo Dryer E2. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. As always, if you have additional questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't know the answer to those questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to Sunlu to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!